God's people. If you don't believe that, ask Moses. And nobody bother you like God's people. Sometimes you say to God, you know what? Okay. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, I'm ready to lay hands on their throat because laying hands on their head is not working. Don't pray for this person five times on the same issue. If I get a hold of a windpipe, something might click in the brain. <laughs> so you just got to go to God and go, help me. Your kid's a little crazy. Just help me. Anybody real in this house? Anybody real in this house? See, some of y'all are laughing because you just know what you, you know, you, you just said what I've been thinking. That's all. You, you know that. Sometimes folk get on your nerves. You want to slap them. And you know it's the Holy Ghost. You go to do this in hallelujah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> You know it. Just want to slap them. It bothered you. Folk can bother you. Know, and you know sometimes, <laughs> you know what happens a lot of times in church? It's the children. In other words, what I mean by this is two ch children will get into a fight. Children are quick to forgive. They tend to forgive each other. They fight, now they want to play together again. The parents, on the other hand, <sighs> You mess with my little Susie like that. We ain't come back to this church no more. You ain't putting her in this Sunday school class. Yeah. It's the parents that, that don't know how to control themselves. Like little chihuahuas. <laughs> it's just one of them. Shut up. You see, thank God he doesn't do these. He, you know what? He loves us. I'm telling you, God treated you the way you treat some folks. Jesus, you'd be roadkill, crispy bacon. Crispy, man, crispy. Because God's good to us. Somebody say amen to that. He's, he's good to us. He works with us. Nobody would live. Our problem is we don't deliver the same kind of mercy we receive. We want mercy. Someone may have to repeat something to us three and four times, and we want them to have mercy on us. But now, if we got to repeat it more than once to somebody else, what is your major malfunction? What's your problem? Why aren't you getting this? Hmm? God, God's going, now see, i, I got to teach you so to be childlike is to give mercy. To be childish is to want the mercy but not give it. Now, look at this in Romans chapter 7. Uh, excuse me, Romans chapter 8. Hear Paul talk for a moment, and, and Paul's going to get us down to some... some Verse 5, he's going to get us right down to some nitty-gritty. I'm reading from the Amplified, Romans chapter 8, verse 5. For those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its unholy desires, set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit and are controlled by the desires of the Spirit, set their minds on and seek those things which gratify or satisfy the Spirit. You understand what he's saying? He's saying the reason where we start where our trouble is, we start off thinking in the wrong way. We're about, that's why a lot of you are having trouble now. It's all about you. You don't want to look like a fool. You don't want someone to see you in a bad light. It's all about you. That's childish. You've got to ask God to bring you out of that. Somebody say, Lord, bring me out of that. Verse 6. Now the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, is death. But the mind of the Holy Spirit is life, soul, peace, both now and forever. Listen, verse 7. That is because the mind of the flesh with its carnal thoughts and purpose is the King James uses the word enmity. This translates is hostile to God. Your flesh is hostile to God. It will end up blaming God. Well, I don't understand how come God didn't let me have a father. I don't understand why God didn't let me have a good relationship. I don't understand why God didn't let my parents have more money so I could have more things. I, I don't understand why, why, why I wasn't received more in school. I don't See, the flesh starts to blame God. It's hostile against God. 
It's angry against God. Listen, for it does not submit itself to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Verse 8, so then those who are living the life of the flesh, catering to the appetites, impulses of their carnal nature, cannot please or satisfy God or be acceptable to him. In other words, what God is trying to say is if you want to mature, you got to start by changing the way you think. And you got to start by changing the way you think regarding yourself. You must see yourself as I see you, saith the Lord. No greater, no lesser. You must receive who I said you are, that you are the salt of the earth. You are the apple of my eye. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a peculiar people. You must receive who I say that you are, that you are powerful. You are more than a conqueror through him that loves you. This means your past cannot conquer you. This means I don't care what was done to you. I don't care what was said to you. It does not have authority over you. Somebody shout yes. It does not have authority over you. Hallelujah. 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 Because somebody called you stupid doesn't make you stupid. You've got to make up in your mind that thing's not staying inside of my soul. That thing's not staying inside of my emotions. You've got to throw those seeds of doubt and fear out and replace it with the word of the internal God. I believe God. Let every man be a liar, but let God be true. Let every person, let them be a liar, but let what God said be true. I believe God. God. If God can just find somebody that'll believe him in this house. Some of you right now, the reason why you're so struggling is the devil has got a chain around your neck and a ball and chain around your ankles holding you to your past, holding you to what people said. God said it's time for you to lift up your head and lift up your hands and tell the devil it's over. Game over. You done played this stuff long enough. But I know who I am now. I understand that I'm a child of God. And you can't do this to me any longer. So when this stuff comes to my head, I will open up my mouth, lift my voice, and give God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody shout, enough is enough. <laughs> this is what God is looking for. God is not looking for wimps. You hear me. You cannot be a wimp and be a child of God. It takes a warrior to be a child of God. It takes a warrior to stand flat-footed on the word of God and say, I shall not be moved. Like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water, I shall not be moved. Here comes the devil in with a flood of unbelief, a flood of depression, a flood of fear. You're laying on your bed and you're thinking on the bills and you're thinking on those that laughed at you and mocked you. Honey, it takes a warrior to stand up right in your spirit and tell the devil I don't think so but to lift your hands right in the devil's face and say I'll praise him till you got to leave I'll create the atmosphere because in his presence is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore I'll praise him because he inhabits the praise of his people I'll create the atmosphere where every demon has got to get out of my room Shout hallelujah in this house. Any warriors in this house? Any fighters? God's looking for some fighters. Can I tell you what God's looking for? He's looking for folk that just don't lay down, roll over, and play dead for the devil. The reason why some of you aren't getting healed right now, you enjoy it. You enjoy it. You enjoy the fact of people giving you pity and, and being able to excuse your actions that aren't right because you suffered this or suffered that. 
friend, there comes a chant time where that's no longer legitimate. Well, you got to come beyond that. There comes a time where you got to say enough is enough. The devil has held my life captive and has held me and stopped long enough. I'm ready to rev my spiritual engine and get out of this place. Enough is enough. Yes, I've been hurt. Yes, I've been lied on. Yes, folk put knives in my chest. But there's somebody greater than all of that. I said a greater than your hurts is here. I said a greater than their words is here. And he's in you. I said he's in you. I said greater is he that's in you. Jesus doesn't have to make a house call. He's already in the house. Anybody believe God in this house? God said, I'm looking for some warriors. I'm looking for people that are spiritually roll up their sleeve and tell the devil, I will not be controlled by my emotions. I will not be controlled by my feelings. Because I woke up today and I don't feel good doesn't mean it's got to stay that way. You hear me? I have authority over me. I may wake up and not feel good and don't know why I don't feel good. But I know how to change it. I know how to praise my way out. You hear me in this house? The Bible says that Jesus has the keys of death and hell. You might feel like you're in a living hell right now. Look up at your daddy and say, let me out. You got the keys to let me out of this. You got the ability to release me. Let me out of this, God. And I'm going to praise my way out. I'm going to open up my mouth and give you glory. See, warriors, honey, understand they're going to have to fight. They're going to have to dig in a while. And even though things aren't going the way they need to go, I know how to look up at God and say, I know you're in charge. Somebody shout, he's large and in charge. Give somebody a high five and tell them God's large and in charge. This God I serve is large and in charge. He's not trying to find a throne. He is the throne. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord said, is there anybody in this house that understands that I made you more than a conqueror? Is there anybody in this house that understands this isn't just something just to get excited about while you're in a church service? But when you're home all by yourself and tears start flowing down your face, and sometimes, friend, they never come down your face, but they're flowing down your heart. But you know how to lift your hands. You know how to surrender your will to God and say, I know. I know you're able. I know you're able. I'm hurting right now, but I know you're able transform yes Lord I feel the anointing just moving upon the pastor right now to come pray for us pastor Ballester come on and pray for us hallelujah everybody that can stand up right now get ready to receive something as the man of God begins to pray I want you to lift your hands get ready to receive God's getting ready to downpour into you as the man of God is just going to pray the way the Lord leads him to pray Dear Lord, we stand in desperate need of you tonight. God, we are putting away the past of our childish...